Hey guys, Tired Piggy here. Oh, oh man, I just got done with my morning workout of uh, throwing boxes around. You know, got to train, right? Got to train. That's always important. Uh, if you guys like card tricks, you should subscribe to the channel. That's, that's always helpful because people tend to forget that that matters. And apparently, you guys need to double subscribe. So make sure to hit the little bell icon if you guys want to know when Piggy comes out with videos because apparently just subscribing isn't uh, enough, so you need to do that twice. Well, I'm gonna show you guys a card trick today uh, with these cards. Uh, I thought, why not be a little bit racially diverse and show you guys a card trick with these playing cards, the Bicycle Black Tigers, uh, Wakanda Forever. Uh, oh boy, uh, for this particular card trick, we are gonna need the use of a table so I thought, why not just do a, uh, a vlogger transition into one of the tables? Let's just get, let's just jump right into it. Um, let's just jump right into it. Whoa, whoa, man, how did I get here? It's almost like After Effects or something. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a card trick. I have a little bit of a placemat here just to make things a little bit professional. You know, people are always complaining, man, piggy, you really don't have any professionalism. And to them, I have to say, uh, you could go. F so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a card trick here. Uh, and this is one of those tricks you could do for th for like three people. So imagine you have a, a little bit of a crowd gathering. You say, hey, would you like to see a little piece of pre prejudice dictation? And uh, they say yes, which is uh, good because at that point you have consent. Uh, so now, you show an ordinary deck of cards, the ordinary front and back, apart from its uh, very edgy black tiger design. And you turn to a couple spectators and you're gonna have them touch different cards in the deck. So you turn to the first one and say, sir, I would like you, for you to hold out one finger, uh, much like a doctor would. Go ahead and touch any card you want, sir. Go ahead, uh, do that right now. And of course, the spectator touches the seven of diamonds. Another spectator touches uh, this one over here, the five of spades, that's fine. And then the last spectator touches uh, this one, which is the, the Joker. Of course, I don't know this because, uh, well, honestly, I have abandonment issues. But all these cards are lost in different parts of the deck. They actually remain exactly where you left them. Uh, but now here, as a magician, you roll up your very nice piggy merch sleeves and you say, hey, um, I'm going to actually attempt to find your cards, sir. The first one with a little bit of a fancy cut. One of these fancy cuts you might see street magicians do, but I find the, the, the card here, which is the Joker. Isn't that astonishing? The next one we find in a little bit of a special way. We just cut the cards in the table just like this, and we give one of these fancy in the air flippies, and we see that gives us the five of spades. So was that uh, one of your cards? Yes, it was. And the last one, I actually uh, do a little bit of a cut here and uh, use this to distract you from the fact that I've already found your card and placed it on the table. What? That's right, uh, the last card, the seven of diamonds. Thus concluding this amazing trick and showing you that with belief, everything is possible apart from all your hopes and dreams. Um. Times the world looks perfect, nothing to rearrange. Sometimes you just Get a feeling like you need some kind of change. Whoa, we just jumped into the uh, explanation part of this tutorial. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what's inside. Uh, I'll explain this for uh, 59 likes. 59 likes. So if you, like, uh, if you like this video enough, I'll explain to you how to do this amazing. Uh, so here's how you do the trick. You're going to have three spectators pick cards and you're going to control them to the bottom of the deck. So I like to use the spread call technique. It just so happens that on Patreon, I dropped a way of doing this with an out jog that is very convincing and works with up to four spectators. So you might wanna check that out. The link is in the description below. Uh, do it, do it, uh, do it. So here's uh, the alternative way for you scrubs. You're just gonna use a spread call technique, which there's a video up here where Piggy breaks down a spread call and shows you exactly what to do. So you're gonna spread the deck towards one spectator and you're gonna spread call any random card here. In this case, it's gonna be the four of diamonds, a card that reminds me of my childhood. 
and the many adversities that I had to traverse as a black woman. So you have the spectator touch any card they want. You make sure that this card that you spread cold goes below the card they pick. This is going to act as a slider card, something I talk about in more detail in the video. Dave Solomon, a student of Ed Marlowe, came up with this brilliant technique, and now I'm using it to appropriate on his culture. So you show this card to the spectator, the three of spades. As you turn your palm face down, you notice that this card is going to make it very easy for you to slide this card back and to the right, back and to the right, back and to the right. Of course, this is done as your hand comes down to continue spreading the cards. Of course, this is done as your hand comes down to continue spreading the cards and having another spectator touch another card. Let's say they touch this one. Guess what? That three of spades now acts as the next slider card. So I could take this one and as my hand's turning down, slide that card to the right and have the last spectator touch a card. Yeah, boy, the five of diamonds. Now, guess what? When I do this action for all the cards, they are now subsequently controlled to the bottom of the deck exactly where I needed to be for the following bit of prejudice detection. Don't worry, guys. Don't fret. I have some South American slow motion for you guys uh, straight from 1990s LNL Publishing just for you guys. Here we go. Oh yeah, so now we're good to go. We have the spectators three cards in the bottom of the deck and we're ready to produce them in whatever way we want. So the first one, I like doing a little bit of a production by Richard Sanders. Now the original production looked a little bit like that. However, I've modified it using a cut that I've taught in another video up here if I uh, care enough to put it there. But for this, all we're doing is we're buckling the bottom card as we swing cut half of the deck on top of that buckled card. So notice when you buckle that card, what ends up happening is that you get a little bit of a pinky break right there between it and the rest of the deck. Oh yeah, just for the guy who complained about my pinky, uh, pinky break zoom-ins, bitch. So here, when you swing cut, you're gonna ride that card over underneath this packet. So at this point, you can do whatever false cut you want. I like just swing cutting another pile out jogged. Now, I could flip this one over much like that double lift everyone loves to do. I could pinch this pile, take it and revolve it and flip it up and around this top half over here. But guess what? When I take that pile out, it leaves a natural break that I could procure with my pinky finger so that now I could flip this pile over on top, do a swivel cut. When I put my thumb between the halves, I could then show this card and reveal it to be the card the spectator picked. So let's go over that one more time. Let's say they picked the four of spades. We buckle, we swing cut. So now the four spades is underneath this packet. Swing cut another pile, this time out jogged. We're gonna flip this packet on top. So now we have this little bit of a situation here so that when we take this pile and pinch it between our fingertips, we could flip it over on top of this half, still keep that pinky break, which we use to swivel cut. And now instead of replacing the halves, we just put our thumb between the halves. So when we extend our thumb, Guess what? That card is going to come into view. Oh yeah, what a hot bit of a production here that anybody could do and it's fairly easy and it keeps the deck in the same order. Man, Piggy really gives you guys all the works here. So after you produce that first card in this very fancy way, you place it on the table over here. Now you want the spectators to be in the front because in a bit you're going to sneak a card on top of this card and you don't want them to see. But don't worry, it's going to be covered under the darkness of night. So the next production, you could do any false cut you want, but ultimately turn the deck over and show that their next card is on the bottom of the deck. I used John Gustafaro's ballet cut. It's a wonderful, beautiful cut, and you can find it in his Brainstorm series from LNL Publishing back in the day. What a good set. So now you have the three of spades, but guess what? 
the other card is right underneath the three of spades. So you could dribble, keep the double, and that way I don't have to do any sort of get ready, any sort of break. I'm just good to go. So you need to procure and lift up two cards as one from the top of the deck. So you have the three of spades and the four underneath. Again, you could do this in whatever way you want. You could do the pinky pull down. You could do however it is that you choose to get a break there. You do it and you feel good about it. But you get a break and show the three of spades to the spectator. Of course, holding a double. Now you're gonna place this card on a table, just like this, you're gonna place it on top of the card. However, you're gonna draw attention to the deck as you do the next move, which is all you're gonna do is put it on a table and slide it to the right, which is gonna show the four of diamonds. But of course, you're drawing attention to the deck and saying the last card is gonna be revealed once you realize that I'm using all these false cuts to distract you from the fact that I already found it and it's on the table. Oh yeah, so again, the, the timing on that is you've just shown this card, you put it on the table, you slide it over as you show the deck, do whatever cut you want and say the last card over here is gonna be found after a series and you do whatever fancy finger flicking false cut you could do and say the last card is actually already on the table. Um, I'm that good, I'm that good. And here you have a simple way of revealing three cards to the spectator that they'll be very impressed. So the first one is just a little bit of a false cut and they go, wow, he's really good. The next one, another bit of a false cut and they go, man, this guy's tremendous. I've never seen a magician this good in my entire life. And the last one you go, wow, this guy really knows how to do false cuts. He must never have ever seen a female. Wow, what, the card's on a table already? How did he do that? He didn't even go near the table. But yes, I did. Yes, I did, mom. So uh, that's the trick. It's a very easy trick, very simple to do. And uh, I hope you guys perform it and do it justice. Uh, make sure to do all the things that people do. Hit me up in the Patreon, dog. Hit me up there. Lots of cool content. Lots of cool cats there. Uh, and some dogs. We have to be diverse. It's 2018 and the current year, in fact. We need to be as diverse as possible. Uh, what, um, all righty then, I'm gonna go figure out different ways to use a close-up pad as an actual uh, pad, as a... Um see you again, when I 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 see you again. Oh, <laughs> shit.